There are two types of slaves of Allah. There are two types of ibad. There are two types of servants. There are two types of Muhammadis. There is one group of us who tell ourselves that I want to be that person that I pay my salat on time. I'll give my zakat. I'll go for my hajj. I'll do all the tasks that have been assigned to me as an ummati of the Prophet I'm doing that. I'm doing all those tasks the best I possibly can. All those tasks have been taken care of. But that's where that person stops. That's where his engine turns off. Beyond that, there's nothing for him or her. But then there is another group of people. There is another group of ibad of Allah. That they say to themselves, that yes, I will take care of all my tasks. My salat will not hinder. I will not fall back in my zakat. I will make sure my suyam is the best as it possibly can. But at the same time, my responsibility is to raise the level of other people around me. Is to raise those that are within my communities. And when Hassan radiallahu anhu asked his uncle, Hind Abi Hala, when he asked him that please you describe to me what my grandfather was like. Describe to me who was he? What was he like? And we believe without a shadow of a doubt, in a blink of an eye, that whatever, whatever qualities are defined as good qualities and as positive characteristics, our Prophet was the epitome of that. Any good quality that a person can think of, our Prophet had the best of those qualities. And if there was any negative quality or a flaw, our Prophet was the furthest from it. So when Hassan asked his uncle that described to me how the Prophet was, it was not an easy question to answer. You know when someone asks us a question, that, hey man, how is that person like? What is she like? What is he like? The process of answering that question to leave a positive light on that person's heart is to speak about the best quality that he or she has. Now when someone's asking you about someone and you want to put him in a good light, you say, you know him, he's a very generous person. She, she's a very kind person. He's a physician. She's an engineer. We start with the qualities that will leave a mark on the person's heart. Well, it's easy for people like us because we don't have many good qualities. They're numbered. But when you're speaking about the Prophet ﷺ, which quality do we start with? And which quality did he start with? And many a times when we speak about the seerah and the khuluq of the Prophet ﷺ, we become overwhelmed. There's so much to speak about. There's so many qualities. And it becomes difficult for us to grapple and grasp a specific quality. But today, let's speak about that quality which won the Sahabas. Let's speak about that quality when we're speaking about an era and a time in which these people... And if you open the books of history and flip the pages, perhaps there's not a time which was worse than this. What did this man possess within his life that was able to turn these people into individuals that ruled the world? Not only did they rule the world, they ruled the hearts of people. So he starts off by saying, the كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, فَخْمًا مُفَخَّمًا That the Prophet ﷺ was a man who was naturally honorable. In his natural presence, people were in awe of him. In his natural presence, people were positively affected by him. Just by sitting with him, just by sitting in his gathering, your morale would rise. You would feel better about yourself. You will feel good about yourself just by sitting with the Prophet ﷺ. In the battle of Uhud, there was a lady by the name of Hamna bint Jahash radiallahu anha. And she runs into the battle, in the battlefield. And as she runs into the battlefield, Sahabas come to her and say that your father has passed away. And she says, so be it. Move out of my way, I want to see how the Prophet is. Another man comes to her and says to her, your husband has passed away. She says, so be it, let me move forward. Another man comes to her and says, your, husband, your, your, your brother has passed away. She says, so be it, I want to see how the Prophet is. And finally, she reaches where the Prophet was sitting in the bottom of the ditch with his, two, with his teeth, shaheed, blood streaming down his face by the rock that hit him. He's sitting there bleeding. And this woman runs up and she sees the Prophet sitting down in such a situation, in such a state. And as she comes close to him and she sees him, she grabs her, her dubatta, her hijab that was covering her head and she wipes the tears that were streaming down her cheeks off her face and she looks at the Prophet ﷺ and she says, my father became shaheed, my brother became shaheed, my husband became shaheed. But O Prophet of Allah, O Prophet of Allah, كل مصيبة بعدك جلالون. 
that every hardship in this world, every calamity in this world, after seeing you, becomes non-existent. It disappears. This was the effect that the Prophet had on the lives of these people. 